welcome back to the Louder Now podcast. Thanks for being here. I am your host, Jared Deal. For those of you that are listening, you know who I am. For those of you joining for the first time, this podcast is all about mental health, faith, addiction, recovery, big subjects, and uh, the goal is to give you hope, give you perspective, uh, enrich you, educate you, enlighten you. Um, Hope comes from having conversations, talking things through. So thanks for being here, and here is another episode of the Louder Now podcast. Okay, well, um, Susan, thanks for being on the podcast. Uh, As you know, this is the Louder Now podcast. I'm Jared. I'm the host. Um, uh, I talk about all things faith and mental health, which are two really big uh, subjects. And so I'm especially excited to talk to you because I know you have kind of, we have um, a lot of similarities and you're an author of a book. I got it right here, everybody. See, here we go. Wait, oh, shoot, camera. It's called Some Dreams Are Worth Keeping, and um, I've read about half of it. Oh, she's got it right there in the background. I know. I don't know what's up with this camera. but And also, a big thing that you have done, which is amazing, is that you're also a TEDx speaker. And when did you do the TED Talk? What year was that? That was a year ago, January. And it's called having a mental illness is not a death sentence. Awesome. That's right. I mean, and and I did watch the video. That was like the first thing that I watched when we um, got connected. I was like, this is great. Um, Yeah. I mean, we can, uh, I'll probably eventually ask you that question. How how did that come about? But um, also you're a Golden Knights hockey uh, fan which I grew up playing ice hockey in Colorado. Oh, nice. I just started playing again a few months ago. And um, cool. so, and I actually became like a Golden Knights fan because like the Kings were like horrible for like forever. So <laughs> I was like rooting for them. And then now- and I'll admit like, it, when yeah, I lived I, in LA, I was a Kings fan and yeah, I jumped. I know, I was, anyway, yeah. I was going for them this year cause they like, it was like their first time in it in like four years and like the Dustin Brown was gonna retire. And yeah. then, I, and then the, anyway, the Avalanche won. So that brings back I memories see. cause that's where I grew up. So, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, so, um, you're here on this podcast because you have um, experience with bipolar. Um, if people aren't familiar with bipolar, like, I guess my first question would be like, when did you he- first hear that word? Was it from a doctor? Um, and like, how old were you when, you know, maybe you started to kind of understand a little bit of what that meant and how it kind of was like affecting you? Can we start with what bipolar disorder is? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I always like to just start with that and then I'll answer your question. Sure, you can yeah. ask it if you want. Yeah. Um, so bipolar disorder, it's a mood disorder. It is genetic. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain, which causes euphoric highs, known as manias, mm-hmm. and devastating lows to the point of suicide. Okay. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Uh, so sometimes, uh, the mania can be feel good, right? Um, usually that doesn't last very long. So your mania can be like my very first episode, I didn't sleep for like 30 days. So that did not feel great. Well, it didn't really feel great right away. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it did at the time, didn't it? Yeah, but it can be associated with maybe positive like oh I'm getting a bunch of stuff done right and I'm like um, you know being like a workaholic and you can kind of feel some pleasure from that and but then um, it gets into you know a time where it doesn't feel great so I know I was 21 when I had my first episode but then I I was I was 19 there you go okay so exactly that's the onset And were you, um, based on what I've read from some of your book, right, you were like in, you went to school right away, right? You like left and uh, college or? uh, I graduated high school and I went on this cruise with a friend. Oh, that's right. That's when the mania started. 
Yeah, that's the beginning. It was of the book. an yeah, insane yeah, yeah. weekend. I was doing all these uncharacteristic, crazy stuff. I, I remember going down uh, this water slide into like 50 degree water in like a two okay. bathing <laughs> suit. People are like, oh, she must be on drugs because it's yeah, a little yeah. cold to be doing that. I'm like, right. I was a non-drinker and I'm screaming, somebody buy me a drink. I'm dancing <laughs> on tables and, and, and it was just, I was up all night. I was writing in my journal. And I remember I, I had all the world's problems solved. All you had to do was ask me because I had an answer for everything. <laughs> and then the racing thoughts. Can you you understand the racing thoughts? Being yeah, well, I think for people that might not know, because a lot of times with these conversations, it's like, you know, um, what was that like, right? That's kind of like what people ask. And then sometimes you're like, Oh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's kind of like, yeah, your your thoughts are just um, you don't feel like you're like fully in control. You know, when you're stable and things are calm, you know, you're like you feel like you're in control, right? So, it's it's a little bit of a you you don't feel like you're fully in control, and so your thoughts are just like really, really, and it might be positive stuff, but. It, in my experience, I, it's negative too, yeah. you know. I I say it's like having a radio going on in your right. mind. And it's right. just it doesn't stop. And yeah. 24 switching seven, stations. You can't <laughs> turn your your head your thoughts off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, just some peace and quiet here. Right. And then you when you were going through that, um did you sleep or was that no i was up in the lobby listening to the vacuumers cleaning oh right and <laughs> oh, then, you're on this thing you're on this this trip yeah oh, and wow. then my friend and i ended up fighting and se we separated we, okay we okay. shared the room but she went and found other people because i was so crazy and oh. then i went oh. by myself a lot of a lot of the time too and you weren't were you with your parents i'm trying to remember now because no. that's the beginning of the book you weren't with your parents no, right? i was celebrating my high school graduation right that's right okay yeah i know it's it's um it's not funny but it's like it's it's uh when you look back you there's some humor sometimes oh, yeah. this stuff right you but it's always laugh. like there's never a good time like for me when my episode happened i was right in school i was like my last year of i was going to like a bible kind of religious place and it was my last year of school it was in the fall it was October so it was like right before my birthday and it's like there's never a good time to have a <laughs> have an episode right you know what I mean you're like oh why can't we schedule this for uh like when I get done with school like maybe like the day after I graduate that would be convenient you know but did, it's you, always under did you understand what was going on because I had no idea um well i think the faith side of things right um i've been in church my whole life and when my episode happened i was in um this place called the international house of prayer which is this very unique like charismatic environment some people think it's a cult anyway it's just it was very extreme although i had some of that stuff as a kid too um so yeah i think i thought it was a spiritual attack spiritual warfare is a word people use like the devil was involved i did have one person one friend my friend kyle he was he was probably like 10 years older than me he he was the only one to my memory that kind of said that it wasn't spiritual he's like you're just feeling this way because you're not sleeping he didn't say bipolar he just was trying to like unspiritualize it because I was so, and then when I came home, my family kind of did the same thing. Like none of us were like, you need meds, you know? Yeah. So I was very lucky because my mom was a nurse. Okay. That's she right. Yeah. And so she had taken care of her brother, my uncle, who okay. has bipolar disorder, does not do as well with okay. it. Right. And, and so she knew right away, like, oh man, we got to get her a doctor. Yeah, it's 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 especially when you start the losing the sleep thing. Um, that's where it gets really scary pretty quick. It's like, you know, that's why people go to the hospital 
hopefully right away like like right when you're feeling it like you go right away and just yeah i was very lucky i have that phobia of hospitals and i'm very blessed that i have actually never been hospitalized okay right your mom was kind of the that's why and yeah then, yeah similar yeah. for me except for I, I did go to the hospital wait a couple episodes in. i did but at the beginning it was kind of like my like your parents are kind of the hospital like I came home and that was the hospital. So, <laughs> yeah. And then I agreed to take the medication. So it okay. wasn't like, no, I'm not going to take. So I think since I was compliant. Right. And then how did you respond with the meds? Because I know it's always like, you know, unfortunately, sometimes, right? It's like the, we're, <clears throat> we're the experiment, we're kind of where the, the patient. So, it's a little bit of a guessing game, right? Like, let's just try this and let's see how you do. So was it like a miserable experience or was it okay or? I remember my father being terrified. You know, my parents didn't know the side effects, right? They're right. different for everybody. So I remember like I was coughing in the middle of the night and my dad just made a beeline into my bedroom just to make sure that I was okay. Oh, okay. but, you know, I was manic, so I wasn't aware of what the side effects would be, or I don't remember having fear or just kind of going with yeah. it. Yeah. Well, not to make you feel old, but I mean, what year was it that you, you were 19? Nine, it was 95. Okay. I was going to say, because um, uh, I felt very old. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Sorry. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I know. There's never an easy way to answer, ask that question. No, no, no. Uh, uh, see, this is me in real life. Actually, that's exactly what I, I do this all the time to women. And there you go. That's why I'm single. So it's actually not because of bipolar. It's because <laughs> I don't know what to say ever. Oh, that's such a yeah, weird you're thing. You're doing great. Just be yourself. That's all we want. That's a weird thing to say when you have your own podcast. You're like, I don't know what to say, but I like to talk. So that's why I have this. So I do so. No, uh, anyway, anyway, let's go back. And, um, well, I was going to say, because the, you know, for me, it was like 2007, but I would say, I think, especially in like the nineties, the eighties, uh, it still wasn't as like Prozac was around, I guess, right in the early nineties, but it, do you think there was more of a stigma at that time? Obviously now we're talking about stuff way later on where it's more common, but that's an interesting time for it to happen. Do you think? It's possible. I don't yeah, know. yeah. It was just at the beginning of my bipolar journey. So right. I didn't have any experience with the stigma at the time. Yeah. Um, and then when you start from what I've read of the book, right? You kind of jumped into school right away and you were like- I did. Kind of trying to figure it out and make it work, which is awesome actually, like the the amount of um, stuff that you were like trying to do, right? Like all of the homework and the classes and you were talking about uh, relationships with, with boys. And um, I just was reading some of the book before we started recording. So I was like right on the um, flirting with the wrestling team thing which I thought was really funny because <laughs> I could do the same thing if I wrote a, a book right I would be like oh man this girl and that girl and this, this yeah you know. that, it's funny when my father read it the, the, <laughs> the only thing he really said was gosh there were a lot of boys in there yeah yeah well, I was gonna say that too but, that you know, that's fun. part of bipolar I think the the hypersexuality yeah well it's for yeah. me definitely no, for sure. I would totally relate to that. And it's also awesome. that happened in every okay, don't get me wrong, people. No, I'm not saying that happened in every situation. But. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was gonna say some of it too is um just normal too, right? It's not completely like 100 percent like this is because of the bipolar. It's like, no, right? we all wanna be loved and accepted by someone. And sure, dating when you look back at it can be a sucky thing if you get your heart broken all the time right but it's like well at least you're because I'm sure some people with bipolar might feel like it's hard to probably date and have relationships I mean that that's a whole podcast series on right. that right which so it's cool that you're but you're married now right and 
which is amazing and, and awesome. And my handsome prince. We've been married. We just celebrated 15 years of marriage. Oh, congratulations. We've been, awesome. we've been together 18 years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, one of the things I've tried to do with this podcast, I kind of said at the beginning was like, you know, merging faith with mental mm -hmm. health, which is like, whoa, those are like really big um, subjects, right? Because people can not have like uh, mental health challenges, but still obviously go through hardships and their faith is tested or however we want to word it, you know, but what was your faith um, experience and like how did that affect the diagnosis and like did did that was it like a hindrance at times or did it help or kind of both or I am a devout Catholic okay I was raised Catholic and my faith has anchored and sustained me throughout my entire life yeah that's awesome yeah for sure. um and then you did a kind of a support group right at your church for, yeah. for a little bit um and i'm interested in that because that's an idea that i've had as well um with some of my friends and stuff i haven't done, done it yet though so you actually did it so what was that like doing like support for people like in kind of a church it was really neat because i felt like i had went to a nami uh, meeting before but we weren't right. allowed to talk about faith and I was like, well, I can't live my life. I can't do this. I can't carry this cross without my faith. Right. So I was like, well, maybe we need to be having a support group within our church. Okay. That's cool. And then, yeah, because I think for me, like, I would think sometimes the struggle with that is having boundaries and, and um, you know, good self-care because part of bipolar sometimes is that you you don't take care of yourself yeah you just push it and push it and push it and we know that stress is the thing that's kind of the um like you talked about in the book with like going to school and like taking too many stress is the thing that pushes us you know <laughs> to the enemy the is yeah. the enemy and we're constantly trying to find the balancing act you know to, to keep us stable yeah i know and it's like nobody wants to be you know, up high all the time, right? And then no one wants to be Whoa. feeling depression. And so sometimes it's like, well, which one would you rather have? You know, I'd be like, oh, I'd rather just be sad. Than How about the mixed mania? Yeah, well, that's the thing too, right? Where you yeah. kind of, you know. I've experienced that. Have you experienced mixed mania? So that is where you kind of are kind of maybe like up at like going in, in and out of both like within Man. two minutes, I could like cry and laugh. It was crazy. Like, crazy. Um, For me, that's how, what I experienced. Anyways. Yeah, you know, I um, I want to say maybe not for a while. I think I've been more on the um, kind of, well, I have been stable for, a, or more stable recently, but I don't know, maybe not in a while. I think for me, I felt like things got really drawn out. Like it's like, when the mania was around, it would last for, you know, a month or two months. And then I would go into like the lows and then that would last for yeah. a long time. And then now I'm like, kind of just in the middle, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> good, your, but... Did you experience seasonal? You're um, in California, so probably not. Yeah, you know what? Not as much in california which i think you probably could relate to this too a little bit being in vegas because we're similar um how it's kind of hot and warm all the time um but yes yeah because i lived in kansas city when uh -huh. i had my first few episodes and that was very like distinct um like winter was really yeah cold. my iowa days were ugh. yeah i think it still does like the time change right that we just oh, had, big um, time Oh my gosh. So right, there's a lot of um articles and studies on how like April, May, and June is actually a high like suicidal um mm. time. Like as far as you know, I mean I'm sure it happens a lot because there's we you know people die by suicide unfortunately all the time. But yeah, even I think the time change of because we go from like light to like way more light. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, because it's all warm. And but I, I'd rather. I feel like, I w- would you ever want to live somewhere that's like um, cold or like seasonal? <laughs> You know, my husband's from Seattle. We're actually oh, yeah. Oh, that's what my sister tomorrow, lives. But I couldn't do it. Oh, man, I'd be so depressed. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, my sister's up there in that area. And I've, it's beautiful to visit. And then it's yes. like, I've been there when it's been, we've done like a lot of holidays there. Nice. And I'm like, wow, it's like this, like eight months out of the year. You know, like you go, mm-hmm. it's like rainy. Yeah, I think one of the secrets for me is uh, definitely the Las Vegas sun. Even though I get tired of it just the the environment I think is yeah. um you know something that's talked about a lot that maybe gets overlooked is like kind of physical health and exercise right you were talking about the sun and like does that help you do you go out and, and burn calories like I, I try to go play hockey although yeah. that's only like once that's a, week. a big one I have a gym membership I love yoga I go to nice. yoga on Sundays okay. or I do YouTube yoga and I love to hike and we have some great places to hike oh, here cool. in Vegas. That's perfect. Yeah. I think um, the exercise, like, especially with the bipolar is like, it's hard. It's hard to be, you know, get a buddy or something or yeah, find, like, you get the cool. motivation some days or like, hey. yeah, find like a CrossFit and stuff. And then, um, what made you want to be a teacher? Uh, I grew up with the dream because probably because I was surrounded by teachers. My best friend's mother was a teacher and she, okay. I just fell in love with her. Unfortunately, she passed many okay. years ago, but my best friend who lives in Colorado, she's a teacher as well. So we, I think we both wanted to be like her mom. That's cool. Uh, well, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, what's the you teach little kids right so I am a special uh, I'm an instructional assistant for special needs kids with learning disabilities okay for for kindergarten first and second grade in an elementary school awesome and you've been doing that for a while right yeah I'm going on 15 years at the same school and uh, have great teachers great um, supportive administration and very wonderful children that I work with that make me smile and no two days are ever the same. Yeah, that's amazing. Really yeah, I was going to say, well, it's kind of a big thing. I mean, obviously COVID has been around now for, you know, feels like there's all these phases, right? We went through like the really hard time and then now it's like a little bit better or, or maybe not a little bit better. Maybe it depends on where you live, right? Yeah. But when COVID, um, you know, first hit, like, how did you deal oh, with that? Was that hard? It was a disaster really? because everything changed. I actually had to go on some anti-anxiety medication for a while. And oh. I would like feel this tightness. I think it was like watching the news, you know, and seeing oh, all right. these people dying and, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. And this, yeah. And then I with got my school being shut down overnight. And then trying to have to figure it all out from the computer. I'm not technical. I mean, it's amazing. You oh, right. here. So I was just stressed. And it was not. I got you. Because you guys had to do like Zoom classes. Yeah. Figure it all out. And nobody knew how to do it. No one had ever done it before. And it was just overwhelming. Yeah, I remember the early days too. Because um, I was working like at an office. And so I was... I, I had a job at a hospital, oh, which wow. was like a really bad idea. So <laughs> I worked as like a mental health worker in a hospital and it was oh, April gosh. 2020. And um, I was already struggling myself. I was in the, anyway, I was in the hospital like a few weeks before I got the job at the hospital. Oh, <laughs> it's like crazy. I text people, they're like, I'm like, oh, I'm at the hospital. They're like, wait, are you in the hospital? Or are you working at the hospital? I was like, oh no, I got a job at- they're like why am I getting like, you're the still there it's been like a month no I I literally did three straight well a, yeah. almost a month yeah and then I just was like I can't do this and then anyway I had still struggled after that and so I gave it a shot I just I wanted to see if I could you know take my experiences and yeah. help people but unfortunately um 
you know, 12 hours a day. Okay. I remember one time I was in like the adolescent unit and this, this one kid was being just, um, you know, like aggressive and he, he kept punching the wall and I just, was, all my job was to literally like watch him for the whole day. <laughs> And I was, like, unfortunately i've seen that in this in my school in some yeah programs. i was gonna say do you guys do like mental health training now no or? no 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 it's have at it yeah they don't do it they don't do anything even with autism i work really? with some autistic kids but i've just learned as i've gone along the way yeah oh wow okay yeah i don't um I really respect what you do. I don't, I've never been like a teacher. I just, I would imagine that there's all these different kind of factors now, right? There's like technology, which, you know, it's like, I, I remember being distracted as a kid and we didn't have phones, at, you know, I had like a flip phone in like my senior year of high school, you know, but I was like so distracted with like paper and like a pen, you know, and like drawing, you know, and I'm like, can't imagine if, you're on your trying to sneak your phone like 20 yeah, but i work with the little ones the babies so they don't i don't yeah know. that's true i they guess still they still like school too that's why i like the little ones they're yeah. not so attitude that they don't want to be at school yet once you get third third grade and up yeah Hopefully yeah i was gonna say you're right your kids a are, lot of the kids don't you probably teaching like junior high or high school <laughs> but yeah anyway so the co i, I give you because the COVID thing at the beginning i remember just watching every day when Trump was president, right? Like the like COVID um, emergency team briefings, like every day at like three o'clock, right? And you're just like, well, why wouldn't I watch this? I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm like, I'm just gonna interrupt my Netflix for this thing. And like, it kind of felt hopeful, not hopeful, but like positive for a while because it was like oh we got a plan we're doing it we're doing it but then you know another 30 days of lockdown another 30 days you know and then someone's like we're gonna be locked down till august right and i'm just like what <laughs> and i would like i gave myself covid about 20 times like oh my gosh i've got a cough it's covid oh right i'm I hot that. i'm having a hot flash honey i have covid my my, my husband's like stop I know everybody's paranoid that every little oh, sickness, and then it's goodness. like, luckily I didn't have to take a COVID test until like last summer. Yeah. Um, so I, but I'm like, I can't imagine um, if you think you have it right in those early days where the testing thing was like non-existent, like you just yeah. basically had to go to the hospital, you know, and yeah. yeah um, well, I'm grateful that we've, things are a little bit better now i've been in california though california's been really strict about everything so yeah not wearing it do you wear a mask anymore no, really. i'm gonna i'm vaccinated i got a booster yeah. i'm kind of like if i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it i know it's probably gonna be mild yeah well that's how i think a lot of people are now or or maybe other like um uh not that watching the news all the time is even good, but right, like other stories, you know, war in Russia, right, gas, right, like other things have kind of, yes. I mean, monkey pox seems scarier than COVID, right, you know, <laughs> There's, I'm just like, what's going, there was like, oh, there was another funny thing during COVID too, it was like, oh gosh, what was it, it was like this article about like killer bees or something uh, in Africa yeah. coming to America. I remember something. that. And I'm yes. just like, there's riots, there's COVID. And then now this, this is like Jumanji. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is, <laughs> I feel like we're playing Jumanji where like every time we roll something bad's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like the kid gets the monkey tail and the, you know, <laughs> the thing, you know? Uh, great movie. But um, um, so he wrote a book which is awesome. I'll just kind of switch gears a little bit. Um, I have said so many times because now I've done so many interviews. I'm like, I want to write a book. And I've had a lot of people on who have had memoirs. Um, so how did that come about? Did you feel like you were always a writer or? I know. Always curious. You know, I had graduated college. I was done. I was not going to do, you know, I'm done with school. I'm done with everything. And then right. soon after we got married, I just kept having kind of some flashbacks 
about everything that had occurred. And I know that I needed some healing. So mm -hmm. I decided to find a how to write a memoir workshop. Okay. Went to that at one of the casinos here in town and bought a book. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. And then came the hard part, like sitting down and actually doing it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, writing's hard. It's hard. It's like a discipline. Of so I found a mentor at our local college, and I took a non-credit class. So there was no pressure. Okay. And I got the encouragement uh, that I need, that I have talent, and that, okay. yeah, I could really pull this off. But it took years to write really? it. Years. Really? Years. Because it was so emotional, you know, to stop and start. And I was working. I mean, I didn't do it every day. I'm exhausted from my job. Yeah. So, yeah, I was gonna say how um, how long. So I know everybody's time frame is like like I've heard some people say like oh I wrote a book in like a month and a half you know and it's like yeah, but not like a heavy one like our stories. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, and I I've attempted yeah I've attempted to do it too, um, about a year and a half ago or something, and I I kind of ran into the same thing where I was like. Well, I'm used to talking about a lot of the same stuff over and over again, kind of with NAMI. Um, I've done about a hundred presentations with them now, you know, like that's like a hundred times telling my story, but writing it where you're trying to get into more detail and like, I'm talking about like my dad, we didn't have the best relationship, right? Or even, even the suicidal stuff, you know, if I start talking about that, it doesn't necessarily make me suicidal you know but if you do it long enough and you're on that it's you, it's hard it's like you do it for like 20 minutes and then you're like i need to go watch a movie or a, a show that's how you yeah. do it that's how you do it you yeah. break it up like that and i also use my doctor records i don't know if you've seen a lot of therapists or psychologists but i've had some wonderful ones in my life some therapy yeah and dr ziggy's the main one uh, through the college days and so she kept really thorough notes so she i got a copy of like this big really oh that's cool years so that's how i could remember because i don't you know remember the details from yeah I was say, yeah you, you go all the way back to so the start of the book was the cruise right okay. and you said you were and then i go back to my childhood because i experienced depression and anxiety there as well yeah, and then do you have like um, because I know this is true for me with my dad's side. Um, there's like bipolar, and he had a lot of struggles where he didn't really get help for you know, kind of self medicated. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's um, my good golf that I had mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, and then was that? Did you have that in your family or? Yes. You yeah. My mom's mother, my grandmother. Okay. Suffered mental breakdowns and depression. And then my mom also is, she's diagnosed bipolar too right now, but mainly depressions her whole life. Yeah. So you can see, you know, you can just point to that. Kind of runs in the, in the family. And did they ever get like, obviously you've gotten a lot of help and, you know, gotten the medication and the therapy and the steps, but did they ever do that or? Uh, my, my uncle, not so much. He ended up uh, turning to alcoholism. Right. And you know that he no longer, you know, he doesn't take any medication and kind of lives by himself and went through a divorce and some some sad things with him. And I know my grandma, you know, it was old school days. She was a farm girl. You yeah. Know, you, just, you didn't. Right. You kind of just go and like w work, like you just keep doing your thing, even if you're whatever you know that, that's kind of how you do it um and another cool thing you've done is the ted talk uh which is i've had a uh, two people on here that have done ted talks um and yeah how did that come about that's really amazing and um i know you probably spent a lot of time because it's you don't have the pa paper in front of you at the ted talk no, people think like, that oh there's a no, the entire thing is memorized. 15 minutes of memorization. And let me tell you, for me having bipolar, memorization does not come. Yeah, no, I got oh. I totally relate to that. I totally oh. relate. So yeah, 15 minutes is a long time. Yeah, I totally relate to that. Um, and I turned to Toastmasters to help promote okay. my book. 
part of that. And yeah. then that they taught me all the skills. And then I had a friend who actually helped me write write the TED Talk as well okay. from the Toastmaster group. Okay. And I did practice. I practiced for 14 months on that TED Talk. Wow. Because it kept months. getting moved because of the pandemic. And this, oh, okay. you know, with the bipolar, the stress was horrible. I ended up hitting my husband's car, like backing up one day because I was so mad that the, the rehearsal did not go the way I wanted to. So, I mean, wow. it just, mentally, it took a toll. The anxiety was so bad. It was then, really rough. Wow. Was, yeah. Was like, would you do it again? I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> would you? Okay. Would you be interested? No, um, where was it at again? You, it was here in Vegas. Oh, okay. We could only have 50 people. It was one of those times with the COVID. We can only have 50 people in the room. That was what the governor came up with. So my husband couldn't even be in the room. So I was like, well, how am I going to do this without my parents sitting there? Oh, right. That would be cool if they were. So wouldn't. what we did, I have the board right here, is my, my coach. She's like, just make a poster board with all the pictures on it. So of all oh, my loved cool. ones. So I have cool. So she held up the board. Yeah. Do you, um, or maybe you have, have you, would you be interested in speaking more like not memorized, but just telling your story if you had the opportunity like to a high school assembly? Oh, yeah. or... And I'll tell whoever will listen. <laughs> I will yeah. tell my story. That's my passion in life. I'd love to travel the world. And I've had some speaking engagements through a Catholic women's group coming up. So I'm cool. just like hoping that I get to keep sharing my testimony, um, you know, with my faith weaved into it because that makes me happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm in like the same exact position. I've been very grateful with the same thing with the NAMI stuff, but then I've, I've had um, a couple other opportunities outside of that. I'm like, that would be like the goal. Um, that would be like the dream right there. Right. It's just go around. And yeah, I mean, so many people are, um, I think even before COVID, right. Struggling with their diagnosis. And a lot of times when you talk to people, it's like, you know, they go through something and then you always ask like, oh, well, did you ask for help? You know? And then they'll be like, oh, I didn't, you know? And it's like, you sometimes it's, it can be like a long time, right? They're like, oh, I went like five or 10 years without mm -hmm. getting, asking for help, right? And then you're just like, whoa, that's so much time. Like, why did you do that? You know, not in a judgmental way, just like curiosity. And a lot of times it's just, right all the things we tell ourselves right shame or just fear yeah. of like I wouldn't tell anybody when I first started yeah. working at my school it was my dirty secret I wouldn't tell anybody before right. the book came out like nobody knew like close friends did but it was you know my parents were always big on like oh don't tell your bosses no 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 yeah when yeah they found out I was very blessed they they had already known me for a, for a while so they they were okay right. with it and supportive and educated about it. Yeah, I just got a new job at a, um, I won't say where in case they're listening, no, I don't care, but uh, at a grocery store. And I haven't, you know, at the interview, they were like, oh, what's your availability, right? And I'm like, well, I'm not the best at getting up early, right? And it's like, oh, I haven't kind of had a job like this in a while where I've had to like have a schedule, and, you know? So no, it's just- good. Like, yeah, and it's, it's a funny it. thing because it's like if I was to say what's really the reason, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they would really care, you know. Well, you I mean? don't want to start an interview like, hey, by the way, no, I know, but it's just, it was a funny little experiment because I was like, oh, I haven't been in this position because the people around me know what's going on with me, you know, but I don't need to be like, hey, man, I can't wait. Well, some things like church stuff, like, hey, do you want to come early and you know, do the setup. And I'm like, oh, that's really early. I can't do that. <laughs> and what, it's like, right. what time do you get going during the morning? Well, um, with the Seroquel and stuff, it's, it's uh, now with my job, like the earliest I've had to be there is nine. So it, it, but it does have to do with, you know, the night before is really important. So it's like, okay. if I take my it, it, it's when you take the meds. So if you have right. to be up at eight, you probably need to take your meds 
at like 6 30 or 7 yeah and, and right. i'll still be up till midnight really or 11 oh. because it just takes a while to, at least this is the way it's been for the last few years so it is it is a thing where you you know and it's like i go out and you know i go do fun things that right. and naturally i'm like a night person um, but yeah, early mornings. Um, and then I feel like it takes like a couple hours to wake, wake up, <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, got my coffee, got to get going. So it's like, oh, please don't talk to me from. <laughs> no, I have to, I'm up at six. Just Whoa, during the wow. work week, just during, well, I take my medicine, like you were saying earlier, I take it at seven 30 and I'm exhausted from my day job. So I'm just out right away. Okay. Well, you got, yeah. Sleep. Well, I was going to say, I think uh, you would know this. I mean, we know this, but for people listening, like structure, right? When you have, well, it's really important if you don't have bipolar, but if you do just like the temptation is always to kind of just impulsively make decisions, right? Like I'm going to stay up late and binge watch Stranger Things, you know, and it's like, well, that might be fun, but you probably shouldn't do that because you're going to feel, you know, but for us, we have to be kind of like, strict about you know you know and me living yeah. in vegas you know i like to go to my concerts you know yeah yeah i just saw sting for the second time and oh cool yeah it I was, was awesome um, so, um oh sorry Keep i don't do it very often maybe once every now and then and i have it all planned out i take my medication right after the show you know i don't drive i have an uber with a friend or right. somebody gives me a ride and yeah I, i've done that too and, and you know you just so, get used to yeah. you're like okay i'm not gonna get much sleep tonight and but you right. just you live i mean you know no that's awesome well that's a that's a way of coping right it's like well just you know, you got to plan things. And I do the same thing. I'm like, Hey man, can you pick me up? Cause I got to be up early tomorrow or whatever. And it's like, yeah, no problem. Right. Or take a lift or whatever. Um, I was going to say in your book, you kind of weave together. Like for me, I would probably do it with movies, right. But you do it with music where you kind of quote different things you were listening to. I think at the yeah. beginning you talked about like Tom Petty and um, you know, and I was like, that's cool so what what is your what's one of your favorite concert experiences oh wow you had? Well, there's i've seen so much what is my favorite or one of them i guess doesn't have to be oh you just said you saw sting that's cool well, sting recently was wow because i love him he's just an amazing man um, good stage presence you know, he, he's been using the same bass guitar that he used 30 years ago, even though people are wanting to give him new one. He's like, no, I'm restring it. Yeah, use it. My <laughs> favorite one. Wow, I didn't <laughs> know that. I, yeah. I feel so like I, I admired that. And it was just, it was good. I saw you too a couple of years ago, the 360 tour. And oh, that was amazing. Wow. Like the whole. Yeah. It That's was spinning awesome. the stage. Was, that was pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Do you do other kinds of writing, like poetry? Um, yeah, poetry? I blog for BP Hope, Bipolar okay. Magazine. Yes. Yeah. I have a friend who did an article about me. Um, I think that's the magazine. So my friend Sasha through NAMI, and she was on the podcast. And um, that's cool. I get like the emails. So I've probably read some of your stuff. Oh, yeah. Book. I'll have but, to you know, that's a non-paid thing too. So that's my time. Yeah, I, I got you. I have yet to figure out how to get a paid gig. So if anybody knows a way to get a paid gig. Right, yeah. Please yeah, let me I'm know, still trying I've been to make trying this for forever. I know. I'm like, I'm still trying to make money on this podcast. What's wrong with people? You I know, know right? I mean, Come on. Why don't you guys listen? I just go and uh, I just go and use different phones and download the, the episodes, the podcast, and just keep clicking. So that when I check the stats, the, the, the views are really, really, really high because I use all these different fun. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do for my uh, TED Talk too. <laughs> so it's like a bunch of like, you know, incognito window accounts or something where it's like, wow, I just got a thousand views this week. It's like, 
Okay, well, that's not my mom. She's not listening to everything I say as much as she loves me. Let's let's be right. right. And then I ask my yeah. friends, and they're like, "No, I don't listen to your podcast." No. I know. Okay. Um, well, we. This has been so fun getting to talk to you. I'll, I'll ask you kind of just to wrap things up, um, so we don't talk for two hours. Although we probably could. Yeah, I think we could. Uh, um, I always kind of ask people this at the end, and maybe you've been asked this question before, but it's kind of like. You know, someone who's kind of really struggling is listening, you know, doesn't have to be suicidal thoughts, although that's a huge part of my story. I, I know you probably experienced that too. Um, but just kind of the hopeless, despairing thing where maybe they don't feel like, you know, much hope right now in this, you know, summer 2022, right? Like, what advice would you give to that that person i want i think people need to remember that there is always always light at the end of the tunnel yes do not be ashamed to ask for help hope is always there and never 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 give up because you are loved you have a purpose and you matter awesome yes that's great advice um Thank you so much, Susan. Thanks for I'm having so me. This has been so much fun. Yeah, thank you. And I, I am going to finish reading your book and thank I you. will post it on Instagram when thank I'm done. I will say, I read this book. Everybody go buy this book. So, And check out my website too. Yes. Johnsonauthor.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. All my information's there okay. as well. Perfect. I just was going to ask, like, what's the best way to get in touch with you? And I'll put all of your info in the notes. Um, obviously, you have a book and the TED Talk. We want everybody to go listen to that. So I'll make sure all of that's in the notes and then your website. And then um, are you on Facebook, too, or just? Of Instagram? course. Yes. yes. OK. Yes. Facebook is I'm like off and on because I, I feel like I can only spend. I have an author page, so. Oh, cool. OK. I feel like I can only spend like five minutes on Facebook before I get annoyed so <laughs> right oh boy I'm like oh boy this is this is too much man I gotta just go do something else you know so okay well thank you so much for being on the podcast thank you for having me there I'll be in touch with you soon so have, have a good rest of your day and um, thanks again thanks okay all right bye bye all right all right Thank you guys so much for listening. I will have all of the guest speaker conversation information in the show notes. So you can go there to get a hold of them. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you to my special guest for uh, joining the podcast, sharing your stories, um, giving us your perspective giving us hope i really appreciate that it's an honor to get to connect and um to be in this together all of uh the guest information like i said is in the notes and there's a little end of notes section um you can check out some resources that i've recommended uh for a while now lastly guys please consider leaving a review for the podcast i'll put a link to uh, the Apple Podcast link, and also you can follow me on Instagram, Louder Now Podcast. I'll put that in the notes, and um, also have a Pod Page website. Sometimes I'm on Facebook, but Instagram would be the best way to get a hold of me. And thank you guys so much for being here today and listening. I hope you enjoyed this conversation, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>